It was pomp and glamour this week as KCCFC made history after 58 years of existence. A groundbreaking event happened at the MTN Omondi Stadium. And what happens from then up until the next 18 to 24 months will be construction of the state of the art stadium. We also have a guest on the show tonight, and that's the finance manager of KCCA Football Club. And he will be speaking everything the financial statement for the 2019 2020 season for KCCA Football Club. Good evening. It is season two, episode nine of the KCCFC TV show. My name is Magero Moses Mwanje. You and I are walking this journey together. Now to start it off with the Chan 2020, this week Uganda Cranes bowed out of the tournament and that was after that loss to Morocco and that was 5-2. Uh, definitely the Uganda Cranes are coming up in that one quite strong but uh, unfortunately losing that game. We had four of our players feature in this game, that is Charles Lukwago, the captain of KCCA Football Club, started between the sticks on the day. Dennis Iguma started at right back for the Uganda Cranes and then Brighton Nukani played as a midfielder on the day as an attacking midfielder and also Brian Ahe was starting his first game ever for the Uganda Cranes in a competitive game. Unfortunately, he didn't score just like he has been scoring in the various games for KCCA Football Club, but you get to feel he gained some bit of experience and exposure at the big stage in this one. And definitely Uganda bowing out of the competition. As I speak, the boys are back in the country and uh, they got to play three games in that one because the first game was against Rwanda. That was a nil-nil game. And um, definitely Charles Tukwago keeping a clean sheet in this one because he was the goalkeeper in all the three games for the Uganda Cranes. And then the next game they lost to Togo and that was 2-1. Uh, still uh, Charles Tukwago playing that one alongside players like uh, Iguma and then Bright and Ukani. Ahe were coming off the bench in this one. And for the final game against Morocco, all the four started. But just like I said, as I speak, all the four players for KCCFC and the entire Uganda Cranes squad are back in the country. And uh, you get to think that it's now time for other leagues to go on, that is the Uganda Premier League that will be starting uh, actually this week because Vipers has some games it has to play. But for KCCFC, on the 12th of January, we shall be going away uh, to play Bull Football Club that is in Ginger. So uh, the players are back and I should say that uh, they have to report for training tomorrow on Monday and uh, the spirits in the camp should get high because you have four players that are from the big stage. The exposure is top class. And, uh, you know, you want all your best players to be around as you prepare for games like this because we have only played five games in the league and we're going for a very busy end as we get into the Uganda Premier League and also the Uganda Cup. So top class for the players that represented K um, Uganda and also KCCFC. And uh, we are quite sure that now it's time for business for the football club and we welcome you quite, quite very well uh, back to the football club. Still speaking about Uganda Cranes and KCCFC, six of our players are still part of the under-20 squad. That is the squad that is preparing for the AFCON under-20 that will happen uh, on the 12th of February, still in Mauritania. And the six players are Sam Senyonjo, the second top scorer for the football club this season with five goals. And then you have players like Chizabu Kenya, who also was part of that Sekafa under-20 tournament in Tanzania. You also have players like uh, Kafumbe Joseph, a senior six student at... Uh, uh, that is Budo SS. You have players like Kawoya Andrew still in this one. You have Steven Serada, a senior six student at St. Mary's SS Chitende, still also part of that Sekafa under 20 squad. And, uh, you get, and then Musa Ramadan, a defender still at the football club, former captain of the under 20, uh, that is for KCCA football club, the junior team. So, top cluster for the football club. Our players are, are really making sure they make the final cut. Remember, this team is managed by the assistant manager of KCCA football club and that is none other than Moli Viekwaso. So the players are still preparing for that game that will happen, uh, I mean the tournament that will happen in Mauritania, that is for the under 20. So wish them all the best, keep flying the flag of Uganda higher, and also the band of KCCFC highest. Now still speaking about everything, the Uganda Cranes and KCCA Football Club. This week, KCCA Football Club played a friendly with the Uganda under 20 squad, and uh, that game definitely ending in favor of the Uganda under 20 team, a very strong team, I should say, managed by uh, Moli Viekwaso. And also we have six players that played in that game for the Uganda under 20 squad against the available KCCFC squad. Because remember, four of our players were in Cameroon and then six of them were part of that squad. So that means 10 players were away and the club had to operate within about 20 players. So um, Uganda, I mean, beating KCCFC in that one, 3-2. Uh, Ivan Bogere scoring two goals in that one, a brace. Uh, he was the top scorer for the Sekafa under-20 
tournament that happened uh, last year in December. And also Basangwa coming, Richard coming up to score another goal still for the under-20 squad. For KCCFC, it was Juma Balinya scoring a penalty in that one. And the teenager himself, Aida Dominic, uh, a senior five student at Masaka SS, scoring the second goal for KCCFC. And uh, basically, just to tell you about these friendly games, we were not there to, to, to look at score lines, you know. We are basically trying to get fitness and to make sure our players gain that, I mean, kind of one game time, uh, that kind of physical fitness, plus also uh, enough to help the under-20 squad uh, prepare ahead of the tournament they have in Mauritania on the 12th of February. So top class stuff for both Uganda and KCCFC. And uh, we, I tell you what, we're going to keep having more of these friendlies, especially with teams, especially at that top level the national team so top class for the football club and also for the under 20 squad and wish them the very best in mauritania we hope they come back with that trophy that is the afcon under 20 trophy now we caught up with the kccfc fans this week and we asked them about the chan 2020 tournament that is one for the uganda cranes and also two for the kccfc players that played in this one do they think charles sukwago really i mean played according to his usual potential do they think Denis Suguma was that defender that uh, really helped the Cranes um, get represented in this tournament? Do they think Brighton Nukani really gave those passes that we're used to seeing from him? And also, do they think Brian Ahewa, not scoring this one, had any impact probably on his game? Uh, what probably could have stopped him from shining just normally, uh, just like he does, especially in the league? And also about the entire Uganda Cranes side. This is what the fans had to say about that Chan 2020 tournament and also the performance for the Uganda Cranes and also the KCCFC players on the squad. I'm Louis Isaac Newton, Kakoza, and I'm from Tebe. I've been a KCCFC fan for 19 years. I love Rogers, I'm very happy kalo bakaita kawafu na tandi ko kuagira KCC e football club nga nchali muto dala dala we na tandi kilo tegera we na tandi kilo wagira KCC i am mkugwa shafik stiga a KCC fan for the last 7 years my opinion on our players who has participated in the chan competitions actually i'm singling out one player who has impressed me that is our captain lukwago Someone can say yesterday he considered five goals, yeah. But if it wasn't him, he would have considered more. But because of his performance, I think for him, he impressed me. I think it was a great opportunity for them to showcase their talents on, on, on a wider platform. And I think they did their best and they represented us pretty much well. Abasambi ba KCC since agamant ba kuze bulunji ba kuze bubi chensokolo okogera olwensonga anti bibaba de basamba nzi chemba demba manyide ko sheba ba de basamba baba de once wo mtende nga mulala si mutebi si mole baba de under a different coach Na yeti ba performi nze bulunji, kuma ni chiba vade ba samba, mpira vade ba jifuna bulunji, nga haa hebwa, okude mabeka iguma vya ba da samba, na woya vade tamanyi, tamanyi samba ya we. Mpozi ukuwa gugu nso ugamanga ya geze zako. For a hebwa, he has been on and off. He has only started one game. There's no way I can judge him. For Anukani, honestly, he's in a jerevoz, decision making, they are still lacking. Echokuta ndikali ijileti. Si sobola kugama mbuno techaba kwa seza. Na ya ate, nebe tu samba era ejizi wababa diba inache echimu kubanga obuno urado wajia wajia insiyo na. Kati ate wechiba anti, betuba de tu samba na wababa diba tu singa, hatenga na wababa de no uzi wabu. Si sobola kugama mbu echo nechifula nye chikuru. Wabula jasi fenga fetuba de no uzi wabu. Kangambe we nti wabate tuwete reza chimala. Wabate, kusima ina kumaya chikuanga. When you look at the players, maybe the time they spent during the lockdown, when they are not playing, when they are not active, that affected them so, so much. Because most of other leagues, they also started late. But for our players, for our players on the pitch, they were a little bit slow. The energy levels are down. Decision making very poor. Actually, I think the time we spent in the lockdown, 
contributed to so much to our poor performance. The effect of starting uh, the, the, the league a little bit late has affected the players and the technical team too in a way of preparedness and also being ready uh, to catch up from the long pandemic period that affected almost the whole world. So I think this really had an effect to their preparations for the final tournament. Our poor performance in Chan, it came with a number of issues. One, it is with the coach first. The way he was selecting his team, it is also questionable. Some players were played out of position and you can see like the legs of Guma. He was playing in the, in the position where he's not comfortable with. And he, when you find that some players whom he selected, I don't think we are good enough to go to Chan to represent us, to be honest with you. Another issue, it is, around, it is all about our mentality. Our players' mentality. I don't think those people were ready to go and represent any chan because we are very slow, look fatigued, and the decision making was very poor. Twas so can it sambe me peer at Wagena Kone Dubai Zing and was at Wetegekera tournament. Nin it took up before even that tournament to funa pre matches. Katio Funzing home was in those on tender Seria Nunya line up with Tandika. Omtende siaria ina bia bia nonya ndoza team amani gayo gari ruda wabo na fuwa yobo gari ruda wana netu watu semu tona mene netu la ba gameo ya soka netu la ba anti opponentu wa fe ya sambi la dala bulunge ukutu singa atenga woda ke mukukilabs kilabuzi Uganda buzi sange zero one ninety percent Uganda kilabuzi fe zizi singi la dala na yata kati tu watu kama tona mene netu watu singo ukusambu bulunge Ni watu kuzi saa mali di nechitwe unyi sanyo netuja mugemwe yoku vidi la inapu nechukira dala dala kula inapu ya tandika. And you find that the team was even disorganized and we lacked a first 11 and that all goes back to the coach. How could you lack a first 11? Eh? How could you start testing things during the competition yet you had time to organize? Ate nechirala. Rwanda jo singa jo java tendis. O jo tio mtende se Rwanda jo singo su msuvide mwe chiru mje nye chiri yao. Tuwa samba bubinti, tetuwa ina chetu samba, sisi mje tuwa samba ya itete gerikika. Netuja mpira guwa togo, nga tewali inti oba golo, tujino nya wetu tira togo na yetu kuba. Netuja mpira guwa moloko nga chichi, mula inapu ya chuka chuka. Tuwa sambi didela bubitu esu waziza nge guanga, elatu eta agatu chitere zimbu nambiro. Could have been a fair one. Probably a few things would have been uh, would have gone right, but they didn't. So, on to the next one. Interesting opinions from the fans. Some of them coming up to say that uh, you know what uh, the Uganda Cranes uh, has players, especially this one, had players playing in the local league, and uh, the fact that we had only played only five Uganda Premier League games before they went to Cameroon. Uh, had a hindrance on uh, maybe their performance. Uh, well, that is the fans' opinions. And also some of them coming up to say that probably the way the coach named the squad or the, the, the lineups for the various games, some of them thinking that Brian Heber should have been used more. He only started one game. But well, anyway, those are the opinions for the KCCFC fans and we really respect them. And uh, just to uh, put a disclaimer, the opinions you've had are not for KCC Football Club, uh, but they are the, for the fans of KCC Football Club. So. We are going to be going to a break, and when we return, we have a lot more on the show. And first, we shall have a guest on the show tonight. I told you, we'll be talking everything, the financial statement for the 2019-2020 season. Now, welcome back from that break. I told you we'll be hosting the finance manager of KCCA Football Club, and we'll be speaking everything, the finances of the football club, that is for the 2019 2020 season. We'll have him first introduce himself and then we take it on from there, sir. Uh, good evening, our viewers. I'm Michael Chirunga, the finance manager of KCCA Football Club. Nice stuff. Uh, this should be your first time on the show. Uh, yes, you've appeared before, but I mean, in no, the it's not the first time. Yes, <laughs> yes I've, I've been on the show before. Wow, nice. Yes. First of all, what is your role at the football club? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll try to summarize it in brief. Basically, I'm supposed to make sure that I manage the finances of the club, how the club finances its activities, 
and then I have to make sure that I also manage the working capital or having the funds to run the day-to-day -day operations of the football club. Then, of course, I have to evaluate the investment decisions that the club takes, be it fixed assets or player signings. And I would also say financial reporting, make sure that the accounts of the club are well prepared in accordance with the international accounting standards. Mm. That's it, in brief. Nice stuff. Now, the released financial statement that is for the 2019-2020 season, uh, someone out there wants to know, are these management, ac um, management accounts or audited accounts? Uh, these are audited accounts. Uh, maybe for the viewer out there, management accounts are internal accounts which you prepare and they are looked at by the management which is the board and the other management team. But to, after you've prepared management accounts, you must do audited accounts. Basically, you bring in an external auditor who comes in and looks at your numbers and verifies that the information being presented in these financial statements is reliable. So these are audited accounts, not management accounts. Auditors were hired and uh, this is CAFS Associates. They came and did and carried out an audit and uh, yeah, here we are. Well, they carried out an audit. Uh, would people want to know, are we operating in red or above red? And also explain <laughs> to them what red exactly means. <laughs> uh, the club is still operating in red. Uh, what red means is that the club is reporting a loss for the season of, I'll call it 2020, because our financial year runs from July to June. So I'm talking about the accounts of up to June 2020. So the club did report a loss of 42 million Uganda shillings. Of course, any loss is never a good thing, but it's an improvement from the ones of 2019. That's 2018 to 2019, where the loss was actually 527 million. So from 527 million to 42 million, we are still in the red, but there is a significant improvement. Wow, uh, that's really nice, I should say, from 500-something to 42. We're just peeping to get over uh, that red line, I should say, just like you, you explained to them. Yeah. Now, briefly, take us through the financials of the 2019-2020 season. Uh, okay, in brief, I'll, I'll not go into the detail because of the time, that the limited time that we have. Mm. But I can say that when you look at our revenues, for example, the club reports a revenue of $4.4 billion. That is how much money the club generated, both in credit and cash revenue. So we don't talk about the cash that came in only, no. If you've already generated an income, even if you've not yet collected money, it's always uh, advisable in, in accounting that you recognize that we've made this money. So that was 4.4 billion, both cash and credit. The 4.4 billion was mainly generated from KCCA, KCCA, the institution, funds the club up to a tune of 24%. So then we had player sales. Player sales contributed around 39% of the club's revenue. So KCCA funds to a tune of 1 billion, player sales were 1.7 billion. And uh, you know that we sold four players, that was Awanyi, Timothy, uh, Chambade, Alan, Kadu, Patrick, and Alan Okello. Those are the ones that fall in the period under review. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's the revenue we are talking about of 1.7 billion from player sales. Then we had sponsors who generated around 946 million. And then the other revenue came from stadium hire, 162 million. Prize money, like the, one, the money we won from Sekafa for winning the Sekafa, that was in that financial year that we are, we are talking about prize monies and, uh, and also pills now that we came second and so all these we aggregate them and include them in our financial statement. This was around 123 million. March day revenues were 266 million. Uh, this was a drop from the previous year where we had 286 but it's because also COVID cut short the season. We only had two games to go, home games. So we could have made more money if it wasn't for this season that ended abruptly. And then, of course, we had merchandise. 
Uh, merchandise sales also improved. We generated around 62 million from this, and season tickets around 37 million. Mm. So that was the composition of the 4.4 billion that the club generated last year, both in cash and credit. Mm. Yeah. Now, the person out there might be asking uh, why exactly are we talking about players like Alan Chambandi, Patrick Kadu, and Timothy Awani? Well, the financial uh, statement is from mid 2019 up until mid 2020. So don't say, oh, the guy left in 2019. Why are we saying last year? By, by a year, financial year is mid-2019 up until mid-2020. So you speak about 1.7 billion uh, that is coming from the player sales. Mm. Uh, the, that is to the football club. Has the club, or why isn't the club using some of this money to reinvest and also get very fresh acquisitions <laughs> to make sure we get up there where we want to get? Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe let me first, uh, I just explained revenue only. Mm. But now it's easy to look at revenue and you think the club is generating too much money. 4.4 billion is a lot. They, they, how much do they need to, gen, to build a stadium or all these kinds of things. But let me talk about the cost side too. Now, when you look at the expenses of the club, they are also high. The, the reason why we report a loss, it means that we spent more than the 4.4 billion. That's why we have a loss. When you say we've made a loss, you're saying I've made 4.4 billion in revenue, but at the same time you're saying I've spent more than this 4.4 billion. Either, so that means this has been funded either by credit also, credit purchases and things like that. So if you look at staff and admin costs, these are over two, we had 2 billion 514, 2.5 billion. So this is what the club spent on staff and admin costs. We are, you're talking about staff salaries, NSSF, feeding for the team, medical insurance for the team, office management, the, the office expenses, you have legal fees where you have lawsuits and stuff like that. You have player bonuses when they win games or they win prize, prizes. You have transportation for the junior team. You have all this equipment you're buying. So all this comes to under staff and admin. It was 2.5 billion. Now you'll say, okay, you still have a balance anyway. Then we, we classify it again as we have other operating expenses. Now under operating expenses, you'll have match day. Because every time you see a game in Lugogo, a lot has been, a, a lot has happened behind the scenes to get the team on that pitch and also to arrange the, the event itself, to fly in match officials if it's a calf game, to even travel to play away. So you have travels, you have match, match day expenses and these were 1.8 billion. Because the match day we spent 321 million, travels were 487. Now, the, this is, I, I need to make a note on this one because 487 million was after FUFA took away tickets. Mm. We spent 487 million on the trips to uh, Angola, mm. Namibia, okay. and Algeria. Mm. So that, but the t cost of the tickets was taken care of by the Federation. Mm. Otherwise, this would have been much more than this. Mm. And I, I guess this is another reason, actually the major reason why the club has reduced the loss from 527 okay. million to 42. Because about 340 million that we would have spent on tickets was actually taken over by the Federation. Yeah. So we probably have been reporting a loss of around 380. Still an improvement, but because FUFA took away most of our burden, that's why the loss is 42. Yeah. So you have operating costs, then you have player amortizations, uh, now, player amortizations, to explain this, you're talking about the money you spend when, you're, when, you, when you purchase players, or when, when you purchase players, the money that you spend to acquire these players is not all of it an, an expense at once. Because you sign a player for four years, assuming you give him 40 million as sign-on fee. Let me just use that as an example. It means that you must only write off 10 every year because it's going to serve you for four years. Mm. So 40 million divided by four years will give you 10 million every year. So you must write off. So every, every player that we sign, we write off a value every year until their contract runs out. Now, this amortization is what I mean. Like every year you keep writing off from this one, from this one, and from that one, and you aggregate them. Now, also when you sell a player like how we sold Awanyi, 
it means he's no longer an asset to the club. Now, such a player, you must get him off your books. If he still has a value of 50 million on your books or 20 million, you must write it off at once. Because you've sold him, you've made money coming into the club, but at the same time, you must also recognize that he's no longer an asset to the club. So this registration passes on to his new team and then you write off. So those are the player amortizations, which were around 570 million from all the players that the club has. Then of course you have things like commissions that you pay during such transactions, buying sports equipment, you have things like electricity, utilities, repairs, depreciation of assets, all these. So they add up to 1.8 billion and 1.96 billion if you add in the other operating expenses. So when you add all the costs, the 1.9 billion, the 2.5 billion, the, then you find that the club spent more than it earned. Well, wow. actually, I was going to say, how does the club spend more than it earns? But then you've explained that sometimes you get credits. credits. Yes, yes. Mm. That nice stuff. Now, the impact of COVID uh, on the financials of KCCFC for that past year. Remember, COVID in Uganda started about March, and um, and then even up to now. I mean, we still have the pandemic with us. But then, if you look at that financial statement for 2019-2020, it goes until about June, uh, 2020, right? So that is March, April, May, mm. and June. So how, the impact of the pandemic on the financials? Yeah, actually the, the impact of the pandemic, Moses, will, did not hit the year that we are talking about, like it's going to hit us in the current year. Because they, we, we, we got into a lockdown at, at the end of March. So we lost fourth quarter revenues and may only two games which hadn't been played in Lugogo. So the impact is going to be felt much more in the current period in the current period where we don't have funds coming to the stadium. So when we release the financial statements for this current season, you will see much more the impact of COVID. From last year, it only affected the last three months. Yes, it was there, but wasn't very significant. We will probably talk about a, an amount that is not really so significant to the discussion that we are having, yes. Mm. Well, as we wind up, do you think uh, the football industry in Uganda is growing and probably you can explain this better as a finance man? Yes, yes, I think the football industry is growing, the brand is growing, there is a lot of money coming into the industry, but we can do much better. Uh, you, when every time we go to approach sponsors to obtain funds for the club, they tell you, no, there is a lot of negative press around football in the country, so we don't want to associate ourselves with such negativity and so if all the stakeholders, the press, the, the fourth estate, the government can play their role to try and promote the brand, you will have this industry grow much faster. But a lot of negativity around football is not helping the brand and government can also consider subsidies for things like sports equipment or maybe clubs, taxes and things like that to find a way of making clubs be self-sustaining, yes. Yes, finally, Michael, uh, this week uh, we embarked on a new journey, that is stadium development. Someone out there wants to know, how is the football club going to be able to, uh, I mean, raise the funds to develop that stadium as we wind up? Yeah, uh, the, the football club, uh, many fans have been talking about the football club not doing enough, but like I've explained, most of the money we make from player sales goes into the operations of the club. Now. That's why the, the club was very cognizant of this and went and lobbied for more funding, which we got from government. Government is going to finance the stadium construction at Lugogo. So the money will come in phases, and that's why the stadium will be constructed in phases. So the funding is coming from the central government. Of course, in case of any surpluses, the club will consider also invest, injecting some of that money into the stadium construction. Thank you very much, Michael. I should say you You're had welcome. A, a wonderful time in the studios. That is at KCC, uh, KCCFC TV show. <laughs> yes, thank uh, you. Thank too. you very much. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. Now, you know, we would have loved to have uh, this gentleman. I mean, on the show even longer, but uh, we'll keep having him more and more. And there is really explained that is the financial statement for the 2019 2020 season. And guys, I should tell you now, I feel like an economist because I know things like amortization, <laughs> aggregated. <laughs> It's been a wonderful time with him. So we're going to be going to a break. And when we return, we still have more on the show because we are going to be getting to know what exactly happened as KCCFC made history after 58 years, the groundbreaking ceremony at the MTN Omondi Stadium that happened this week. And we'll be getting to see everything 
as it happened. Now welcome back from that break. Like I told you that after 58 years of existence, that is for KCCFC, this week the club made history because we had the first ever groundbreaking of any stadium that is for KCCFC and this time it was for the MTN Omondi Stadium. That event happened at Lugogo, that is the home of KCCFC and definitely had the RCC of Kampala, that is Mr. Hood Hussein, who represented the Minister of Kampala. Uh, she was unable to uh, come on the day. And then we had also the Lord Mayor himself, his worship, uh, Salongerias Lukwago are uh, coming uh, for that event and also the executive director that is Madame Dorothy Chisaka. We had various directors from KCCFC, the director of education and social services, uh, Madame Juliet Namudu. We had the director of engineering uh, that is still from KCC, the authority, and that is uh, Mr. Justice Akankwasa. So very many other officials, the fourth estate, the media were there. That event was live on Sanyuka TV that day. That was at 3 p.m. on Thursday. And those who were able to uh, watch that show, you were able to just have a sneak peek of everything. But now KCCFC TV show itself was there. And you have everything as it happened, the interviews, and what exactly happened as we had the first ever groundbreaking event for KCCFC. And what happens from then up until the next 18 to 24 months will be construction of a state-of-the-art stadium. This is what happened as history was being made at Lugogo. extremely excited because since uh, we took office in uh, November 2019 uh, we were required to work on quite a number of projects with the, at the club. Our term of office expires in 2022 and uh, we committed to doing certain uh, things before we leave the, uh, the, the, the board. One of them was uh, Talent growth, uh, you, as you are aware, KCCA is a home of talent. We've been growing talent since 1963. Most of the best players in the country have been coming from KCCFC. And we are happy uh, that even at, in the current crop of players, we have quite a number of them playing at the national team. Uh, so talent growth and development is one of our, our programs and we, we pledge to continue doing that to attract the best talent at the club um, and also to develop them. We are happy to inform you that uh, last year we were able to graduate two members of our club uh, from the youth development. Uh, that's Alan Okero. We sold him to Paradu and i'm sure he's happier also wherever he is and uh mustafa kiza so in that uh, program we are doing well the other program we had ed was to galvanize the funds leadership we are the club with the biggest number of funds uh, genuine funds not just excited funds uh, and we are happy that the fund leaders are actually here uh, the acting president sophie is here uh, representing quite a number of them. If we were uh, having normal, in normal days, we would be having a huge gathering here because of the funds that we have. But I'm happy to know that a number of them are following from wherever they are. So we want to improve programs in our funds. They are very organized. A number of them have uh, various programs in the city um, that can help them uh, improve their social livelihood. Uh, the other program we have is infrastructure development. And uh, we planned to improve this, uh, this uh, uh, project here at uh, Lugogo, uh, basically because it's uh, historical. Most people attach to Lugogo and it's our home. So we very much want to improve uh, Lugogo with your support. 
And also, we still have another program because this is not our final home. Uh, we want to uh, thank the Direct Education. She's been helping us in also looking for another program where we can have an all-inclusive sports facility for children and other areas. So that's Chitebi. So we plan to continue lobbying for funds so that we can also develop uh, Chitebi for the benefit of the young and youthful people in Kampala. As the authority, we take KCCAFC as our flagship club among the many that we manage to put KCCA and Kampala brands out there both locally and internationally as we execute our mandate of sports development in the city. We are convinced that our dreams of creating KCCA FC st Stadium as an ambience for the sports fans, athlete sports, the youth and space for talent development will be attained. I believe like the chairperson, the chairman has said, all procurement pro protocols have been followed to acquire this contractor. I would like to express my heartfelt respect for the efforts that everyone involved has made until today, including the technical team from the authority, the Directorate of Education and Social Services, the Directorate of Engineering and Technical Services, the Directorate of Treasury Services, and the, direct, and the procurement uh, department, the club management, the athletes, and everyone else who has participated in this. We are glad that the new form for the stadium will prioritize our supporters in their various capacities. We are grateful to our partners in sports development, MTN, Star Times, and all the others, and I call upon more collaboration in these hard times as we work on this space. Our sincere hope is that this construction project will be executed in accordance with the quality standards expected, be safely completed in time, and we shall continue to win from our home ground. I thank you all for a better city. As we commence this transformation, a new beginning that will see us acquire a modern state-of-the-art home for KCC Air Football Club. A few weeks ago, I attended um, an event in Chitebi where our boys were playing against Rwanda. Chitende, Chitende. Our boys were playing and they played wonderfully. In fact, they scored a hat trick. We won the game, but we lost the war. But while I was, when we were leaving, one of the things that was being stirred up in my heart is that we need our own stadium within the city that our youth can truly enjoy and be able to access at any time easily. And I'm glad this is happening today. The KCCA club has been in existence for 58 years, but has had inadequate facilities that fit the status for a football club in the capital city. There was a need to upgrade this stadium into a modern facility. This journey started in 2018 through formulation of a five-year strategic plan amongst one of the key result areas was facilities and infrastructure development. The club opted to have a concrete stadium due to the various advantages associated including durability, stability, and overall costing. The initial plans the, the, for the facility, the costs were so high that we, they, caught, they opted for this one, which is going to cost approximately $10 billion. Following approval of the plans, KCCA received funding from central government to facilitate the implementation of the, of, of the project. And we want to say thank you, and we are very grateful to the government of Uganda for the initial money that has been availed, 2.5 billion, to start this construction. The stadium 
will be built in a phased approach with the first phase focusing on the VIP wing, which is going to be right here where we are sitting, and emphasis on international best practices for a period of two years. We have so far contracted a local service provider through competitive bidding, and they are to commence the work in, a, in very few weeks from today. On behalf of KCCA and the team, we commit to closely supervise this project. Projects do start, but starting is not the moment to celebrate. We want to celebrate the moment of finishing. We want to be here in a few years' time when this project is finished and we celebrate together. KCCA Football Club being one of the unifying platforms for Ugandans with varying social, economic and political interests greatly contributes to the increasing importance of sports in the socio-economic development of our country. The government of Uganda therefore approved the budget for the construction of the MTN Omondi Stadium with an annual release of Uganda shillings 2 billion from central government for topping up with additional funding from the KCCA budget based on the available resources to enhance the achievement of the above highlighted and objective number one, which is to increase economic opportunities in cities and urban areas under program 11 of sustainable urbanization and housing of the National Development Plan 3. We are the best team in the country. We have a continental brand and uh, all those teams which have visited us here, they have really wondered, is this the KCCA we have always feared? You can imagine. <laughs> I'm telling you, because we are, we are all traveled. We have seen clubs owning fantastic and fabulous state-of-the-art stadia. But ours, honestly speaking, is like a village uh, playground. So this is really fantastic. We invite the contractors, please. You need to understand. You need to understand the pressures you have. You need to appreciate the kind of uh, working environment we are in. And the anxiety. It's really too much. People want to see. The, 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 not myself alone. Actually, what I'm doing here now, and I'm sure I'm, I wasn't here to listen to other speakers, but I'm sure they have all po this is, a, this is a reflection of what is happening within the fraternity of KCC. Our fans is there. Uh, ma, ma, Madame Hoz, the other day, I almost shed tears when I read your story. After these people changed the rules, I said, now what is this? Huh? What is this? These calf people said in the team 15, now they are saying, oh, we have waived that after eliminating KCC. <laughs> Very, very unfair to us. My, my mind was focusing on any legal remedy we can get, and I'm still scratching my head to see if, <laughs> if it is still possible, honestly speaking. Because after defeating these guys, the three one here. Anyway, but that happened. But the magnanimity of our colleagues at Chitende helped us at least to post it that much because it was going to be a double job. But that we visit Rwanda, we fail to raise the required threshold of the players. Then we come home, we don't have a standard a, a stadium which is up to standard. They say, which case is, 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 is in the shambles? It's a terrible club. It was affecting our brand and would be ashamed our partners, the MTN who have just joined us and others who would wish to come on board. So, with those remarks, I thank you very much once again, the team that has made this happen. I hope it will be in tandem with the artistic impression we have got. You know, at times <laughs> you get a magnificent picture, then you begin building it. Yourself, I already have the stadium in my head. That's what I want to see on the ground. <laughs> I don't want to see something different and I say, <laughs> is this what it is? So I already have it. I have the picture, the graphic. Uh, uh, this one exactly the graphic picture we have it so we wish to have the same 
on the ground and don't want to put we don't want to put you on task to oversee what you are doing to always push you at this and that you be self driven sort of motivated you also have a passion for that and the very final thing is that uh we need to see how we can expand on this facility here uh, because honestly speaking it's a very narrow space it's a challenge we have it is something we are discussing internally with the ed with all the stakeholders uh, at different levels at least we have recreational facilities in the kampala state of the art recreational facilities it's important you can imagine this is the only piece we are left with as system managers it's very absurd but i'm glad at least we are having something started let's keep the candle burning let's keep our hopes alive as we aspire for better things well guys you've seen it yourselves that is what exactly happened as history was being made at Lugogo, the first ever groundbreaking ceremony for the football club, and that happened at the MTN Omondi Stadium, Lugogo. What happens from then, that is Thursday, and until the next 18 to 24 months, will be construction of the state of the art stadium. Definitely, Sajan Contractors or Sajan Construction will be the contractors for the stadium, and uh, the works have, uh, should I say, kind of started because you've seen. Uh, if you've been able to see those pictures, there was, uh, the stadium has already been fenced off for some parts. Uh, things are really being shifted. So the first phase works, that is at the VIP section. From, if you've been at Lugogo, from the VIP gate, uh, that small gate just next to Forest Mall, up until the Legends Fence, that is the first phase works, that's where everything will be. And then we expect a lot of facilities under there, the dressing rooms, top class stuff, guys. Things you normally see on TV. Um, we expect to have facilities that will be used by the football club offices for the various management in the football club, coaches' rooms, referees' rooms, uh, state-of-the-art medical facilities inside there with everything that you've ever imagined and all the things will be happening just at that first phase. And also things like a media tribune for the journalists, uh, a, a very nice uh, cafeteria centre where you, at halftime, we have normally been going somewhere to have some of these things. But you'll have all the things at this new stadium, guys, have we been able to see the, the plan of this, uh, this stadium, especially the first phase? And we did uh, share this plan. And I should say, just like the Lord Mayor, the ED and the RRCC said that uh, we hope uh, the, 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 that is the artistic impression will be exactly uh, the stadium once it's complete. And uh, the Surgeon contract construction was there. That is uh, the bosses from Surgeon Construction. And they really affirmed to that that we shall have everything as the plan demand so that is all about the stadium development that is at kcca football club remember on the show tonight we had the guest the finance manager for the football club explaining everything the financial statement for the year 2019 2020 and i should tell you that i've left this show uh i mean with some bit of economics in myself and financials i know things like amortization aggregated <laughs> well if you meet me out there you'll be get, you'll be able to see that i know some of the things we, I also told you about six of our players, part of that under-20 team that will be playing in Mauritania in the AFCON under-20. And the four players that are from Cameroon, fresh and back, they'll be in training tomorrow ahead of the resume of the Uganda Premier League that we hope to start on the 12th of February. That is for KCCFC in that away game against Bull Football Club. There was a lot on the show tonight, guys. But remember, you can still watch this show on the YouTube channel for KCCFC. It will be up tomorrow on Monday. And you can also follow KCCFC on Facebook, that is at KCCFC, on Twitter at KCCFC, on Instagram at KCCFC, and also subscribe on our YouTube channel and be able to watch some of these shows. That's been it. Next week will be February, and we'll be back with Season 2, Episode 10 of the KCCFC TV show. My name is Magero Moses Mwanje. Have a good night.